أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم Lesson number 161 سورة طاها آية number 56 وَلَقَدْ أَرَيْنَاهُ آيَاتِنَا كُلَّهَا And we certainly showed Fir'aun our signs Which ones? كُلَّهَا All of them All of the signs were shown to Fir'aun What does it mean by that? Meaning all the signs that were necessary for him to see in order to believe in Musa a.s. in order to believe in the message that Musa a.s. was giving him. Kullaha does not mean every single sign but rather it means relevant to that context. Every sign that was necessary for him to know. But what did he do? فَكَذَّبَ But he denied. He called the ayat سِحْر وَأَبَ And he refused to believe. He refused to submit. He rejected. In Surah Al-A'raf, Ayah 132 to 135, we have read in detail as to how so many ayat were shown to Fir'aun and his people. وَقَالُوا مَهْمَا تَأْتِنَا بِهِ مِنْ آيَةٍ لِتَسْحَرَنَا بِهَا فَمَا نَحْنُ لَكَ بِمُؤْمِنِينَ And they said, no matter what sign you bring us with which to bewitch us, we will not be believers in you. So what happened then? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent upon them the various signs, the flood, the locust, the lice, the frog, etc., one after the other. But did Fir'aun accept? Did his people accept? Not at all. In Surah Al-Zukhruf, Ayah 48, we learn, وَمَا نُرِيهِمْ مِنْ آيَةٍ إِلَّا هِيَ أَكْبَرُ مِنْ أُخْتِهَا And we showed them not a sign except that it was greater than its sister. Meaning every new sign was greater than the previous sign. In Surah Al-Naml, Ayah 14, we learn, وَجَّحَدُوا بِهَا وَاسْتَيْقَنَتْهَا أَنفُسُهُمْ ظُلْمًا وَعُلُوًّا and they rejected them while their inner selves were convinced of it. They rejected them outwardly, but in their hearts they were convinced. So why did they reject ظلمًا وعلوًا out of injustice and arrogance? قال Fir'aun said, أجئتنا, Have you come to us? لتخرجنا, so that you expel us من أرضنا from our land, our land of Egypt. بسحرك, with your magic, يا موسى, oh موسى. And this was a false accusation. Musa a.s. never said, leave from here. I want to become the king. What did he say? فَأَرْسِلْ بَنِي إِسْرَائِيلِ Send the Bani Israel. Musa a.s. said something completely different. And look how Fir'aun twisted his statement. That have you come here to expel us from our land with your magic? And he calls the miracles magic. So the reason why Fir'aun said the statement was to rouse his people against Musa a.s. And to gain their support for himself. And many times, leaders do such things. That they will show something that is untrue, so that people, their attention goes towards it. And they will show themselves as, we really care for you, we really protect you, we're really concerned about you. And this person, one man, two men who have come here with a stick, showing miracles from that, they're here to overthrow our entire nation. Has it ever happened that two people with magic, they have managed to overthrow an entire government? Has it ever happened? Two individuals and they don't have any forces? Ever has it happened? Never. But look how Fir'aun is saying this to turn people against Musa a.s. To make his people fear him. To make his people become worried that if these two men are within us, we will not be able to live in peace. And like this, they blindly followed Fir'aun. فَلَنَأْتِيَنَّكَ and Fir'aun said to Musa a.s. that surely we will definitely come to you. بِسِحْرٍ with magic, مِثْلِهِ like it. Meaning we will counter your magic with our magic. فَجْعَ الْبَيْنَنَا So appoint between us وَبَيْنَكَ And between you مَوْعِدًا An appointment. What is مَوْعِد? A place and time of wa'd that has been promised, that has been appointed, that has been agreed on by both parties. So let's fix a time and let's fix a place. لَا نُخْلِفُهُ We will not oppose it. We will not go against it. Meaning both of us have to agree upon that time and that place, that promise, and both of us have to show up. Nahnu, we, meaning Fir'aun and his people, wala anta, and nor you. Meaning neither can you become absent that day, nor will we be absent that day. Both of us have to come. And this is going to be makanan into a place that is suwa, that is equal, that is even. Suwa is from the root letter sin wawiyah, and it's understood as sawa which is equal and same, balanced from both sides. So suwa 
means a place that is plain, that is flat, that is even. Because if a ground is very uneven, it has a lot of ups and downs, then what will happen? People will not be able to see clearly as to what's going on. Because it's possible that a person is prevented by the dune that is in the middle. So Makan and Suwa, it has to be a place that is equal and same, balanced from all sides, even with no depression, with no dune, nothing whatsoever. Secondly, Makan and Suwa, Suwa has been understood as that it is equal between us and you. Meaning it is of equal facility for both of us. Imam Raghib, he said, that Makan and Suwa means that the distance is equal on both sides, from where you have to come and from where we have to come. So it's fair for both of us. It's a central location. And central location, why else? So that all the people can come. Because if too far from one destination, it's possible that those people will not come. Think about it. What kind of places do people like to go to that are central? For example, if you have a class in downtown, then people from all various cities can come. So, Makan and Suwa. But Alhamdulillah, those people who are determined, they will come even from two hours away. So he said that it should be a place that is agreed between us and you, and it has to be a place that is leveled, so that everybody can see clearly, and it has to be a place of equal facility for us and you, and for everyone else, that everybody is able to come. And it should be a place that is suitable for you to perform your magic and for us to perform our magic. Because sometimes it happens that the place that has been selected, it's not suitable for one person, for the kind of work that he has to do. Qala he said, Musa alayhi salam said, fine. Maw'idukum, your appointment, is when? Yawmu zina on the day of festival. What is this day of festival? It's the day of Eid. Because zina is beauty. And when do you see beauty at every level? Eid. People are happy, they're wearing nice clothes, they have decorated their houses. So Yawmu Zina is the day of Eid. And the reason why Musa a.s. selected this day was because all people took a day off from their work on this day. And if all people were off work, then what would happen? Everybody would be able to come. So, قَالَ مَوْعِدُكُمْ يَوْمُ الزِّينَةِ وَأَنْ يُحْشَرَ النَّاسُ And that the people should be assembled at what time? Duha At mid-morning. So he fixed the day and he fixed the time. Duha is from the root letters, ضَادْ حَيَّ And Duha is a time when the sun has completely risen. It's the time of forenoon. The sunlight has completely spread. So this is a time when we will gather up. When I will show my miracles and you can show your magic. فَتَوَلَّى فِرْعَوْنُ So Fir'aun went away. فَجَمَعَ And then he gathered كَيْدَهُ His plan. He put together his plan. ثُمَّ أَتَى And then he came. What was his plan that he gathered up? That he sent in all the cities messengers to call who? The most expert magicians. So فَجَمَعَ كَيْدَهُ ثُمَّ أَتَى And then he came fully prepared on يَوْمُ الزِّينَةِ At the fixed place to perform his magic. قَالَ لَهُمْ مُوسَى Now before the magicians were about to perform their magic, Musa a.s. warned them. قَالَ لَهُمْ مُوسَى Musa a.s. said to them, وَيْلَكُمْ Woe to you. وَيْل What does وَيْل mean? Destruction. And وَيْلَكُمْ This is a kalima of tawbiqh. This is a kalima of reproach. That what's wrong with you? Stop what you're doing. Don't do this. وَيْلَكُمْ لَا تَفْتَرُوا عَلَى اللَّهِ كَذِبًا Do not fabricate a lie against Allah. How would they be fabricating a lie against Allah? By competing with Allah's miracles. By calling His Messenger a magician. This is lying against Allah. Because you know what the truth is. You know what the Messenger is showing you is not actually magic. But on the outward you are showing that it's magic so that people get deceived. Because in their hearts they were convinced that this was not magic. Especially Fir'aun. He knew. But on the outward he was making all of this show so that people would be deceived. People would believe him and nobody would believe in Musa a.s. So he warns them, لا تفتروا على الله كذبا Don't fabricate this lie against Allah. Meaning don't call me a magician and don't call these miracles magic. 
And secondly, لَا تَفْتَرُوا عَلَى اللَّهِ كَذِبًا Also, by associating partners with him. How? You see, the magicians were going to perform magic. And in order to perform magic, one has to do shirk. Remember that. Magic cannot be performed except by doing shirk. How? That in order to do magic, you need the help of, for instance, jinn. And you will only get a jinn to do something for you when you have pleased him. When you have offered something to him. And remember that when a person offers something, like for example, an animal, or like for example, some food, to other than Allah, that is a part of shirk. This is why we are told not to eat of that animal which has been slaughtered for other than Allah. So, he says to them, لا تفتروا على الله كذبا by performing this magic of yours. Because if you do so, فَيُسْحِتَكُمْ بِعَذَابٍ So he will exterminate you with punishment. Because this is the consequence of the one who performs magic. The one who does magic. What? That Allah will exterminate him with punishment. What does this word يُسْحِتَكُمْ mean? يُسْحِتَ is from the root letter سِينْ حَاتَ سُحْت Remember? أَكَّالُونَ لِلسُحْتِ What does سُحْت mean? Bribe. Forbidden wealth. And literally, this word means to peel the skin. To peel the skin of something. So for example, a fruit. Or for example, an animal that has been slaughtered. So suht, sahata, is to peel its skin off. And this word is used for bribe. Why? Because what does bribe do? It removes the religion of a person completely. Haram wealth, it completely removes his religion. So, يُسْحِتَكُمْ بِعَذَابٍ Meaning he will completely destroy you. He will uproot you. He will destroy you by uprooting your wealth and your resources and your people. Meaning you'll be finished. Because when something is peeled off, when an animal is skinned, what is left of it? Any life left in the animal? Nothing. Nothing at all. If a fruit, the skin is peeled, what's going to happen? It's going to become dry. If you don't consume it If it's left as it is With the skin removed It's going to become dry It's going to finish very quickly Whereas if you leave the skin It's going to be able to remain for some time So for يُسْحِتَكُمْ بِعَذَابِ He's going to exterminate you with punishment If you lie against Allah وَقَدْ خَابَ And certainly he has failed miserably What does khayba mean? To be defeated To be unfulfilled To become unsuccessful to be frustrated. So he will fail miserably. Who? Man iftara, the one who fabricated. A lie against Allah. Now this was a very severe warning that Musa a.s. gave to the magicians. Apparently it might appear as Musa a.s. is being very harsh. No. This is not harshness. This is not rudeness. This is being firm. This is being direct. Because it was getting beyond limits now. So he is warning the magicians with a severe warning that don't do what you're doing. So what happened? When Musa a.s. gave such a severe warning, فَتَنَازَعُوا أَمْرَهُمْ بَيْنَهُمْ Now the magicians, they disputed over their affair amongst themselves. That some magicians, they said, we should not perform this magic against this man. Some said, no, no, we should. Some said, this is not a magician. This is a prophet of Allah. What he's saying cannot be coming out of the mouth of a magician. So there was a dispute amongst the magicians. Some said, let's compete against him. Others said, don't do that. Because he gave you severe warning. This is just like how when the Prophet ﷺ called the Nasara of Najran for Mubahala. Remember? They said, let's go back. Let's not do this. Because it was a severe warning. That come, let the curse of Allah be upon those who are liars. Whether it's us or you. Now this was something very serious. So what happened? They got worried and they left. Now over here also the magicians, they became concerned, so they began disputing with one another concerning this affair. But what did they do? najwa. But they concealed their private conversation. They did not let anyone know that they were actually having this dispute. They did not disclose their dispute to people. Neither to the opposing party, meaning Musa a.s. and Harun, nor to the public. Because if your disputes... If your differences are known to people, then they will not fear you anymore. 
you will not have that awe anymore. What do we learn? In Surah Al-Anfal, Ayah 46, وَأَطِيعُوا اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ وَلَا تَنَازَعُوا فَتَفْشَلُوا وَتَذْهَبَ رِيحُكُمْ Obey Allah and His Messenger and do not dispute and thus lose courage. And then your strength would depart. If you begin to dispute and people find out that you're disputing, what's going to happen? You will lose your strength and people will not fear you anymore. So whenever people fight, what happens? They lose respect. They lose their awe. Whether it is when a couple is fighting, or when parents or children are fighting, or when co-workers are fighting, whether people are fighting at home, at work, at school, anywhere, what happens? It leads to weakness. So therefore, these magicians were very wise. And what did they do? When they had this discussion, when they had this difference of opinion, they did not let it be known to anybody at all. Now, we see over here that Musa a.s. he was so effective in his warning even that he shook the confidence of the magicians. He had prayed to Allah, Rabbi Shrahli Sadri. So this is how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala assisted him. Qalu, they said, In hadani lasahirani. Some of the magicians, they said, that these two men, they're only two magicians. That's it. Yuridani, they want, an yukhrijakum, that they should drive you out min ardikum from your land, bisihrihima, with their magic. This is what they want to do. So you will let them do whatever they want to do? No, you have to defend yourself. You have to defeat them. وَيَذْهَبَ And they wish to take away بِطَرِيقَتِكُمْ With your way That is المُثْلَى The exemplary one Look how threatened they feel By the presence of two men Two men Whose nation is a slave nation Who don't have any army Who don't have any force with them And all they have is a stick With which they're going to perform Some so-called magic Just imagine And this is how threatened they feel They say that these are only two magicians who wish to expel you from your land with their magic. But one more thing that is mentioned over here is وَيَذْهَبَا بِطَرِيقَتِكُمُ الْمُثْلَى Tariqa is from the root letters طَارَقَ And tariqa is the way of life, the manner of living, the religion of a people, the madhab of a people. You can say the culture. And the word tariqa is also used for the elite people of a society the great people of the society. Why? Because everybody follows them. They set the trends. They set the traditions. So tariqah has two meanings. Traditions, trends, and also the trendsetters. So they want to do away with your tariqah, that is al-musla. Al-musla from the root letters mean salam. And this word is the feminine of amsal. Musla. What's the structure? Musla, what's the structure? Fu'la, any other word on the same structure? Kubra, husna, and what's the masculine of that? Ahsan, akbar. So similarly, musla, amsal, af'alu tafdil. So amsal means ashraf, that which is excellent, that which is most ideal, that which is best, perfect. So they want to do away with your most perfect traditions, with your excellent traditions, your excellent way of life, and your elite of the society, they want to finish them. You understand? That they want to finish your exemplary lifestyle, and they also want to do away with your noble men, with your elite. Just imagine. How threatened the people would feel. How threatened the magicians would feel. And even if they were a little scared by the threat of Musa a.s., what would they want to do? Compete against him. Finish this threat. Remove this threat. Now, there are two important points that must be noted over here. First of all, nowhere in history has it ever happened that two men, two individuals, with their magic, have overthrown an entire kingdom. This has never happened. But what do we see? That Fir'aun and his people, they are using this threat to turn people against Musa a.s. and Harun a.s. Secondly, we see that Fir'aun was very proud of the Egyptian lifestyle, of his elite, of his traditions, of his trends. And the people of that country were also very proud. 
of their traditions, of their elite. Just like today, people are very proud of their celebrities, their players, people who play in their teams, people who play sports for them, people who make movies for them, people who are in the government, who have high positions. Generally, the masses are very proud of such people, especially those whom they support. So, how does Fir'aun and his people, how do they scare the rest of the magicians? That look, these two men are here to finish your culture, finish your society, finish your traditions, finish your trends, and finish the elite as well. But we see that the Bani Israel, they were so weak. And Musa a.s. and Harun a.s. they were only two men. And the same thing we might see today as well. That the Muslims are so weak. Right? They're so weak. They're being oppressed in every land almost by their own leaders. But still, who are people afraid of? Muslims. Who are they afraid of? The Islamic law. But can it ever be implemented? Can you think about it realistically? Think about it. It's impossible. But still, how are people frightened? How are people threatened? That this is what can happen. And they will overturn the entire society. And if you let them build a mosque over here, they will implement the Sharia law. It's impossible. How can they implement the Sharia law? But look at how the people, the masses, they are frightened. They are frightened. And this is exactly what Fir'aun was doing. Why? Because people are afraid of the truth. They feel threatened by it. And this is exactly what Fir'aun was experiencing. فَأَجْمِعُوا كَيْدَكُمْ So he says to the magicians or the rest of the magicians, they say to the others, that all of you gather together your plan. All of you resolve on a plan, you jointly decide. سُمَّأْتُ Then all of you come, صَفًّا in lines, in rows. Why? Because when you come in lines, you appear to be strong and united. So, فَأَجْمِعُوا كَيْدَكُمْ سُمَّأْتُ صَفًّا وَقَدْ أَفْلَحَ الْيَوْمَ مَنْ اسْتَعْلَى And in fact, he will be successful today. Who? مَنْ اسْتَعْلَى The one who overpowered. The one who became superior. Meaning the one who will win, he has succeeded. So Musa and Harun a.s. they came and the magicians, they also came. قَالُوا they said. When the magicians came, they said, يَا مُوسَى إِمَّا أَن تُلْقِيَ Either you throw Imma or annakuna that we become awalaman alqa the first to throw. Would you like to go first or should we go first? What does it show? What does this offer show? Their courage, their confidence, that we're fine either way. It's up to you. Would you like to go first or do you want us to go first? Musa alayhi salam, what does he say? Qala, he said, Bal alqu, rather you throw. Meaning you take the first turn. You go and show your magic. You throw your sticks and your ropes. We learn in Surah Al-Shu'ara, ayah number 43 as well, that قَالَ لَهُمْ مُوسَىٰ أَلْقُوا مَا أَنْتُمْ مُلْقُونَ That throw whatever you will throw. فَإِذَا حِبَالُهُمْ Then suddenly their ropes. Hibal is a plural of حَبُلْ And حَبُلْ is rope. So all of a sudden their ropes were عِصِيُّهُمْ And their staffs. عِصِي is a plural of عَصْلَ So all of a sudden their ropes and their staffs, their sticks, يُخَيَّلُوا it seemed, it appeared, kha ya lam, takhil, which is to imagine, to suppose. So you khayalu, it was made to appear. It was given the impression. Ilayhi, to him, meaning to Musa alayhi salam, min sihrihim, because of their magic, annaha tas'a, that indeed it was moving. It was slithering, gliding swiftly. So all of a sudden, because of the magic that they had performed, it appeared to Musa alayhi salam, that their ropes and their sticks, they were moving just like snakes do so. So what does it show to us? That magic is in reality a deception of the eyes. It's not that actually that thing turns into a snake. Well, for example, you know, in certain magic shows, they would have a person you know, lying down in a box and they take a saw and they cut the person from the middle. And you see the two pieces separate. It's not that actually the man has been cut into two. If you open the two boxes right there and then, you know, the magic will become quite clear to you that it's not really magic. So in reality, what is it? It's deception of the eyes. It's deception of the eyes. Over here we see that you khayyalu ilayhim in sihrihim. It appeared to him because of their sihr. So in reality, magic is the deception of eyes. 
In Surah Al-A'raf, Ayah 116, we also see that سَحَرُوا أَعْيُنُ النَّاسِ وَاسْتَرْهَبُوهُمْ وَجَاءُوا بِسِحْرٍ عَظِيمٍ They bewitched the eyes of the people and they struck terror into them and they presented a great fear of magic. Now just imagine, all of a sudden you're standing and there are so many sticks and ropes that have turned into snakes and you see them slithering and gliding. You see one snake and you begin to scream. And if you see so many snakes around you, how will you feel? Worried, scared. It's only natural. When Musa a.s. he was shown at the mount, when he was told to throw his staff and it turned into a snake, we learned that Musa a.s. ran away from there. He ran. He was scared. So imagine he was surrounded by all of these snakes. فَأَوْجَسَ فِي نَفْسِهِ خِيفَةً مُوسَى So Musa a.s. أَوْجَسَ He sensed in himself fear, apprehension. Musa. أَوْجَسَ is from Wads. Wow, Jimseen. And Wads is a very subtle, a very light sound. If you're sitting quietly doing something and all of a sudden you hear a very light sound. Like for example, perhaps the door is moving. Or perhaps you hear somebody walking. How do you feel? Scared. You feel scared. So this is what what's is. To feel fear in your heart. Okay? And do you show that fear? Do you say like, who's that? Do you say that? No. Do you turn around? No, you pretend as though nothing is happening. Just in case there is a jinn. Just in case there is something. Right? So you pretend as though nothing is happening. This is what what says. That you feel fear in your heart and you keep it inside. You don't show it. You don't show it. So, أَوْجَزَ فِي نَفْسِهِ خِيفَةً Musa Musa a.s. also felt fear in his heart and he didn't show it. He had the confidence by the permission of Allah because he had made dua that رَبِّ شْرَحْ لِي صَدْرِي And he had said that we fear إِنَّا نَخَافُ But what did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say to him? That don't fear, I am with you, inni ma'akuma. But after all, he was a human being. And he did feel some fear in his heart. What does it show? The prophets are humans. The messengers of Allah, they are humans. It doesn't mean that if they're afraid of so many snakes around them, it lessens their rank. No, it does not. This is just a part of being human. But this teaches us a very important lesson, the reaction of Musa a.s. He does not panic over there. He does not even show any fear. Because when you have certain feelings, like fear and sadness, if you show them, it will be very difficult for you to get rid of them. If you don't show them, eventually you'll be able to do away with them. Like for example, if a person is worried, and you begin looking here and there, and you begin screaming, you begin yelling, you begin calling everybody for help, what will happen? Will it increase in your fear or decrease in your fear? Increase. And if you don't show that fear, you just stay focused on your work, you pretend as though nothing happened, you continue your reading, you continue your writing, you continue your cooking or whatever you were doing, what's going to happen? Eventually you'll forget about it. You'll overcome that feeling. Isn't it so? Similarly sadness, if you're sad because of something that happened. And every time you see someone, you start talking to them about what happened to you about your life story. This happened to me and this happened to me. What's going to happen? You will constantly remain sad. But if you ignore it, if you don't show it, if you get yourself busy in something else, then what will happen? That feeling will eventually go away. So some feelings, they should not be shown. Because if you show them, they will increase. And if you ignore them, if you suppress them, eventually they will leave. We learn in Surah Ali Imran, Ayah 153, that the Sahaba as well at the Battle of Uhud, what happened? Fear spread among the ranks of the Muslims, and that is what led to their defeat. Is tus'iduna wa la talwuna ala ahadin, wa rasulu yadu'ukum fi ukhraakum. When you were climbing up the Uhud, and you were not even looking back at anyone, and the messenger was calling you from behind you, but still, you did not look back. Why? Because of the fear that had spread everywhere. Now similarly, if you're all sitting over here, all of a sudden, someone sees a spider in the class and she screams, Oh my God, spider, what's going to happen? Everyone is going to start screaming. Everyone is going to start to worry. So what's the best way? 
that you see the spider, you quietly get up, take a piece of paper or tissue or something and just pick it up and go out of the classroom. This is the way it should be. Because if you show the fear, then the fear is going to spread. So now remember this. Okay? I remember once in class this happened that there was a huge, strange kind of a spider with Allah Allah, how many legs? And one girl, she just got up quickly, she picked it up and she went and she took it away. And I was thinking, just imagine if she made a fuss, if she screamed or if more than one or two people saw it, what would happen? We learned that uh, Imam Malik, once he was teaching, and a scorpion, it bit him. He didn't even move. He didn't even make noise. And it bit him so many times, so many times, to the point that his face turned pale. So when a person is focused on what he's supposed to do, then what happens? He's able to control his emotions. He's able to control his feelings. He's able to not show them. So similarly, Musa a.s. over here as well, because he was focused on what he had to do, yes, he did feel fear, but he just kept it inside. He did not show it. قُلْنَا We said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him the comfort. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to him, لَا تَخَفْ Don't fear. إِنَّكَ أَنْتَ الْأَعْلَى Because it is you indeed who will be superior. You are going to be victorious. So don't be afraid of all of these sticks and ropes that have turned into snakes. Don't be afraid of them. No matter how many they are. Because eventually you are al-a'la. You will be victorious. So we see that for a person to be successful in anything that he has to do, it is very important that he is confident. That he has positive thinking. That he has this confidence that yes, I can do this. If Allah wills. He should not think, oh this is impossible. How will I do it? Because If you keep telling yourself, this is impossible, there's so many, I'm so worried, I'm so scared, you will lose all your courage. And if you remain confident that no, this is possible, inshallah I will be able to do it, Allah's help is with me, then this will lead to success. So the key to success is what? Positive thinking. A positive attitude. And part of that, part of positive thinking, is to have complete trust on Allah. That Allah is with me, therefore nothing can harm me. I will be able to do this.